Hey there everyone, it's Mr. Sinti and today I'm going to talk to you about nervous tissue. Now there's no need to be nervous because this will be a short video and it's a brief overview of nervous tissue. There's actually a couple of different types of cells that are represented under the umbrella of nervous tissue, but we're just going to feature one of them in particular called the neuron, the basic nerve cell. And I also wanted to mention that this particular video will not discuss, discuss how a nerve impulse actually takes place. In other words, the action potential, depolarization, repolarization, that will come in a separate video. But basically this is under the sort of the context of histology. And so when we talk about histology, we like to just basically introduce the tissues to you. Remember, nervous tissue is one of four. It's not epithelial, it's not connective, it's not muscle, so it's nerve. And so where do, where do you find nervous tissue? Where is this found? Well, clearly it's widespread throughout the body. You would, you would know that, I think, going into this conversation. You know that there's a dense amount of nervous tissue in the brain, and you know that also that connects to the central nervous system down the spinal cord, but really nerves are found throughout the body, and they're even in the skin, and they help us to feel things. And so the one thing that I want to say right out of the gate about nervous tissue is that the cells of the, and you're looking at neurons here, the cells are able to conduct impulses. And that's something that I want to talk about just sort of generally in this conversation. But the reason that they conduct an impulse, and that will be explained in a moment, is that they're capable of communication. So these cells can communicate with one another. So in other words, nerve to nerve, and they can also communicate with non-nervous tissue. In other words, you may already know this, that it's the neuron that tells the muscle fiber to contract. It's the neuron that might tell a gland to release um, whatever it is, hormone that it's releasing. So nervous tissue is capable of communication. And so it's, it's really, really interesting. It's a theme throughout the study of physiology, which is cell communication. There's a couple of different ways in which cells can communicate. And we'll look at that um, when we study physiology. But this is a, a nerve impulse, and there's chemicals that actually pass between one cell and the, and the other, the adjacent one. It's called neurotransmitter, and this is how they do it. So I hope that's intriguing. Um, if it's mysterious, that's fine. It, it leaves more to discuss in the future, but here's a close-up under the light microscope of a typical neuron, if there is such a thing. You have a, a typical cell body, which contains a lot of cytoplasm. Now, I, I'm not seeing something that you're not, but there's ribosomes in here. There's uh, endoplasmic reticulum. There's lots of mitochondria. As it turns out that the neuron uses a lot of energy and the mitochondria is what produces ATP, which is what is used to, to help conduct the nerve impulse. And do you see how the, the cell membrane extends into branches out here, sort of like tree branches? So these extensions of the cell uh, itself, these like tentacle, like an octopus has tentacles, many, many branches are called dendrites. And I believe the origin of the word dendrite means branch of tree, or tree, and somehow origin. So many branches. And, and I won't go into the, the significance in terms of the functionality of that, but of course it increases the surface area. And so this is considered to be the cell body, which houses the nucleus. And then do you notice here that the neuron extends really, really long out in this very long sort of extension cord uh, of the neuron is called the axon. And the axon, again, depending on what type of cell you're, you're dealing with, could also branch off in what are known as axon collaterals. So this can even have further branching. And then it terminates into something called the, the axon terminal. And so there's your typical neuron. So dendrites, cell body, axon. Okay, here's some actual light microscope photographs of this. And so what it's a little, it sort of looks like, um, I don't know, spiders in a cobweb or something like that. 
So here's the cell body and here are the dendrites that are extending from this neuron. And again, cell body nucleus, cell body nucleus. So three neurons. So uh, here you have the axon, here you have cytoplasm, here's the nucleus, here's the cell membrane. Uh, these little tiny guys are a different type of cell other than a, uh, than a neuron, a neuroganglia cell. I won't get into that in this conversation. But here again is a typical diagram of a neuron. So here are the dendrites, lots of branching. Here's the cell body. Here's the axon right here. Now, these darkened structures are actually uh, assistant cells that are supportive of the axon, of, of the neuron. These are called Schwann cells. And again, in a, a separate video on the nervous system, we'll get into this. They wrap around the axon, forming this myelin sheath that helps to conduct the nerve impulse very rapidly. And here's the tip of the axon or the axon terminus. Now, what I want to say about a neuron, although I said that I wasn't going to get into what a nerve impulse was or describe that, I, I, I might touch on it briefly. As it turns out, the resting neuron, meaning that if it's not excited, has an overall charge of negative inside the cell. And then, so therefore, it's relatively positive on the outside. So this separation of charge is kind of like a battery. If you think of a typical battery, you have this like plus area and minus. And so it's the, the ability to do, to do work is caused by this membrane potential. And so it's negative here, positive here. So when a nerve impulse comes, like say that this is the axon of another neuron up here, what actually happens is this neuron doesn't actually touch this neuron. Where they come together is a space called the synapse. So the coming together is the synapse. More on this later. And what happens is these little chemicals and vesicles butt off from the axon and they travel across the synapse and they're received by the dendrite. So incoming messages in a neuron, so this is what I'd like you to get from this, is that incoming messages are received by the dendrite and outgoing messages go this way. So the, so the overall nerve impulse is from dendrite to cell body to axon to synapse to dendrite to cell body to axon. And so you're like, well, what is this nerve impulse? I promise not to get into it, but basically what happens is there's a depolarization. So this is polar because it's negative inside, positive outside. So what happens is there's a big flow of ions. And what happens is this becomes temporarily positive relative to the outside, which then becomes negative. And so this cascades down the axon like that, so like dominoes. So it becomes positive all the way through, and then it reverses back to its normal negative. So it's a nerve impulse is a big wave of electrical change that passes, and then the chemicals move. And so in this diagram, you can see here's a nerve impulse um, coming from one neuron to the next. And then ultimately what's happening is if you look at the close up here, you can see in the axon terminus, you can see that there's these neurotransmitters that are being released that are being picked up by the dendrites of another neuron. And so what's kind of cool is that nerves can talk to other nerves this way. Nerves can talk to muscles and cause them to contract by releasing certain neurotransmitters. And nerve can talk to glands to make them release certain hormones, uh, if that's what you want to talk about. And so through this course, we'll talk about cell communication as a major theme because glands can produce hormones, at least endocrine glands can, can produce hormones that communicate a message throughout the body. There's even glands, and that's widespread, there's even some glands that will produce local kinds of communication, and those are called prostaglandins. And then you also have white blood cells, lymphocytes, that can secrete chemicals to call other white blood cells in if there's an infection and to release antibodies. It's very, very cool. So a neuron is, you know, obviously one of the great cells of the body. It's quite remarkable. It makes up our brain. It's, it's enabling you right now to hear me speak and to see me and to, and to think and to understand and to smell and all of these things. 
are contained within neurons. And so I hope you're excited about that. That's one of the themes about physiology is that I hope, you know, these, these videos are not intended to explain everything, but rather to intrigue you and maybe motivate you to want to learn more. And so I hope you enjoyed this brief look at nervous tissue. Thanks for watching.